Hi guys, welcome back. If you're here, you're probably working on retouching a beauty or a close-up portrait of someone's face. And in today's video, I am going to show you exactly how to do that using a dodge and burn method. There are many different types of ways to uh, dodge and burn, but I have discovered through trial and error that this is one of the most simple and effective ways to dodge and burn while also keeping all of your skin texture. The first thing we're going to do when editing our beauty photo is zoom in and check out our skin texture. I usually then select the patch tool that's in this selection sidebar here with the uh, spot healing tool and the content aware tool, but I usually use this patch tool because I think that it is the most precise, accurate way to select skin and choose the exact spot for which your skin will be coming from to replace the blemish that you're trying to remove. So first you wanna just uh, copy your background layer. The next thing you wanna do is select your patch tool and zoom on in and you can see we have a little blemish here and I just go ahead and draw a circle around that and you just select inside your circle and drag it around. If you've never used the patch tool before, um, it's super simple. You just click down and draw around what you want to select and then it selects it. It automatically connects, so if you do like this and just draw a line, um, it will just connect to the point where you started uh, when you lift up. So I'm just gonna draw a circle around this and you just select right in the middle and you can drag it out to exactly where you want to take your texture from. You do have to be a bit careful because some parts can be lighter or darker, but the patch tool is great about that because it actually does like sort of compensate for that and try and match the lightness or the darkness from the skin where you are taking from. So you can see what we've done here and click on and off you can see that it changes there so it gets rid of those blemishes completely which is really nice so i just go ahead and go around my whole face like this and i will just go ahead and do that quickly you really want to take your time um, doing the patch tool because it's really going to save you a lot of time once you start your dodge and burn process uh, the more blemishes and things you get out before you start dodge and burn the better just because you're gonna see those differences in color in any sort of blemish or line uh, once you start dodging and burning you can see here we have a few smile lines where the makeup sort of gets stuck in those and you just want to draw a little circle and same with the patch tool just like the blemishes it gets rid of them really quickly the patch tool is also really great for hair. You just circle around again and um, remove it by dragging it out to uh, replace it with the skin texture that doesn't have any hair. When you get longer hairs like this, you want to do it in smaller sections. So I usually go to the T, do the other side, and then sort of work my way up. The larger sections you use with the patch tool, the more sort of questionable it gets in its ability to perfectly match the skin tone. You can also go in here and do little adjustments to your makeup, make sure that there's no sort of splotchiness going on. A lot of people forget about the nose. You uh, definitely want to get those little nose areas because the, um, the pores around the nose are a bit bigger. You also don't want to forget the creases in your neckline. Everyone has these um, and they don't have to be perfect when you remove them with the patch tool because you are going to be doing a bit of dodging and burning to the neck later on. You just want to get those really sort of big pieces out and also any hair that's along the neck. Finally, I like to come in here and remove these larger veins out of the eyes. Everyone has veins in their eyes, but um, people's eyes get really stressed out underneath the strobe lighting. So it's good to just go ahead and remove those larger veins because you don't want someone's eye to be drawn straight to those veins. So 
So there you have it, that's looking pretty good. We can click on and off here to see our before and after. And now we're gonna start the dodge and burn by going layer, new layer. We're going to change this to soft light. Fill with 50% gray. And rename this to dodge and burn. So this is the layer that we're going to be doing all of our dodging and burning on. A lot of people uh, split up their dodge and burn to two different layers, one for dodge, one for burn, but this method is super simple. We're going to be doing everything on just this one layer. So first you just go ahead and select your brush. You want to make sure that the brush hardness is at zero. We'll then go ahead and go up here to our opacity and select 14. And we're also going to do a flow of around 14. You can play with these numbers a bit, but I found that 14 is a great starting point. We are going to start with a white brush here, but before we go ahead and do that, you want to go up here to your adjustments level and select black and white. And under your red slider here, you're going to take this down to around negative 80. I don't generally go over negative 80. It's going to depend on your subject's skin tone, so you can have a little play here. But the black and white adjustment layer is going to act like a guide for us because it's easier to see where you need to dodge and where you need to burn if your image is black and white. Now just go ahead and click right back onto that dodge and burn layer. And if you don't know what dodging and burning is, it's really very simple. Dodging is when you're lightening an area, and burning is when you're darkening an area. We're going to use this method to make our skin tone more of an even gray. If you zoom in here, you can see that there are some areas which are darker and some areas which are lighter. If you really zoom in, you can see little dark splotches and little white splotches. When you zoom out of the face, you can tell that there are certain areas which are highlight zones and certain areas which are shadow zones. But within each of these zones, you want to really zoom into the poor areas and get those splotches out of there. You want to make the gray in each one of these areas a very even gray. And we start by doing this with the dodge. So we're using a white brush here. Again, opacity 14, flow 14, and hardness 0. And you want to just paint on the darker areas. There are these little lines all around the face that are your pores and your skin texture. And you don't want to paint on the lighter areas. You only want to be painting on the darker areas to even them up to the same tone as the lighter areas. You then want to go in with your burning. There's usually a lot less burning to do than there is dodging. So then you go in with a black brush. And with a black brush, you look for any tiny little white splotches. And you want to just carefully take your time and darken any whiter, lighter splotches down to the same gray tone. So everything is looking very, very even across the skin texture. Another tip for dodging and burning, on this first round, you definitely want to pay attention to any dark areas that shouldn't be dark. So you want to lighten up those circles underneath people's eyes and usually around the chin too. Just make sure you really take your time and you zoom in super close and get all of those little splotchy areas because the more time you take doing this, the more even your skin tone is going to be. Click on and off your dodge and burn layer as you go to check your progress. Know that when you're painting, you're not painting over your skin texture. You're simply just lightening or darkening it. When you got a tube spot that you like, you can then click on and off of the layer to really see the difference that all of your intricate painting has done with your dodging and your burning. You can even click off of the black and white layer and then click your dodge and burn layer on and off and see it in color. You can definitely see that the dodging and burning really evens out your skin tone. However, it does take away a lot of the contour and the highlights. But don't worry about that because now we're going to go in with a dodge and burn layer specifically for contour and another one specifically for highlights. 
So I create a new layer here, so Shift Option Command E on a Mac, and then we're going to go in and create our contour layer. So we'll do this by going Layer, New Layer. Same as before, we're going to change the mode to Soft Light, and we're going to fill it with 50% gray. This is going to be our contour layer. Now we're going to go in with our black brush and we're not going to use our guide layer, our black and white layer. We're simply going to draw with the color layer on. That way we can really see how our coloring is affecting the overall contour of our face. We're going to go in here with a opacity of 25% and also a flow of 25% just to bump that up a little, but we're going to keep the brush hardness still at zero. And when you do this, you just want to go around the natural contour of the face. So we're going to go sort of around the edges of the face, above the eyebrow here, sort of a little bit around our highlight zones, down the bridge of the nose, areas like right under the chin, right under the lips. I also like to contour the nostrils, as well as around the eyes where the makeup is. You also want to go in sort of around the actual eyeball itself. I usually go right into the iris with this contouring brush. I usually also go all around the makeup areas. Anything that you want to pop just a little bit more, you can go in with this contour brush. Now we're going to do the exact same thing for the highlight zone. So layer, new layer, again the exact same highlight. Let's change it to soft light and fill with 50% gray. And using this highlight, we are just going to go over the major highlight areas of the face just to give it a bit more of a pop and a dewy kind of look because everyone loves that in the beauty um, photography world. So we're going to go right up there on the forehead, just underneath the eye, the highlight zone there, along the bridge of the nose, the end of the nose. Um, you can even do a bit on the uh, chin and maybe a little bit on the arm if you'd like. Uh, I also highlight within the eye area and I love to highlight my actual uh, strobe light area. Your eyes will be different and you don't want to match them exactly because otherwise it'll start looking a bit HDR-ish or um, sort of unreal. So if you do have one eye that is darker than the other, go ahead and keep it that way, um, but highlight them both just a little bit. I also highlight around the lips area as well. Once you have that highlighting done, you really see the difference in your image from start to finish. So go ahead and click on and off highlight and your contour, and you can even click on and off your original dodge and burn layer um, to see that when you do have to click off that merged layer though. Um, but you can see just from start to finish the amazing difference that all of your dodging and burning takes. So just remember to take your time and really pay attention to all the little splotches and areas that you want to be lighter and darker and that will even out your skin tone to really make it smooth luscious dewy perfect skin and here is our side by side before and after i went ahead and added a little bit more contrast and also bumped up the exposure on the background but most everything done in this image is all because of all of the time that was spent doing dodging and burning so just remember to take your time and really even out that skin tone as best as possible and your images will also look like this. I hope this tutorial has been super helpful for you guys to learn how to dodge and burn for your beauty photography and close-up portraits. Let me know, do you guys use different ways of dodging and burning? Drop a comment below and consider subscribing if you like this video because I do post three videos every single week. Until next time.